Okay, the tournament is back, so life is good again. It's always so weird that you know you got the first and second round, and, and you go through like withdrawal. Like I got the shakes by the time the games get going today. Of course, all guests on Zaslow Show 2.0 are brought to us by our beer of choice, official beer of Zaslow Show 2.0, Johnny Cuba. European roots with the Caribbean soul, a refreshing German lager in a can. I mean, look, that's how we're going to enjoy the games this evening. If you don't have or if you're out of your six-pack of Johnny Cuba, Sedanos, Presidente, Winn-Dixie, Fresco, Imas, always drink responsibly and don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra, stay tranquilo. I can tell you someone who's probably not very tranquilo, he's probably very uh, wired, very nervous right now, is a friend of the program now, the voice of FAU basketball, Ken Levicka, of course, ESPN 106.3 in West Palm. Ken, uh, you, you must be, uh, I mean, cl- we'll, we'll get to last week's action in a moment here, but you're, you're calling a, a Sweet 16 game at the Garden tonight, Ken. Come on now. Yeah, this is wild. And just to add to it, I mean, it was already, and it's already been a thrill being in New York City to watch the the Knicks lose in overtime to the Minnesota Timberwolves and then take that L to the Heat last night and be be in this place to see that and now calling a game at MSG tonight, Sweet 16. It is, it's awesome. It, it truly is, is big time and try not to take it for granted at all. You'll have to excuse my ignorance. Have you ever called a game at the Garden? I have not. I've never been to the the garden previous. So this uh, yesterday was my first time walking oh, wow. into the place. It's awesome. So it uh, it's it, it's really cool to finally say you've been there. And for FAU to take the floor tonight, it really hit when you've got the uh, the FAU logo on the scoreboard as they're going through their open practice yesterday. It's it's really really cool and a huge huge leap and and uh, profile builder for this program. Dude, your first time ever in the garden. I mean, like you said, it was a couple days. Ago go the wolves but your first visit overall to the garden you're calling sweet 16 tonight man so uh that's that's probably overwhelming i'm sure you'll be fine though once the game gets going but how about the kids on the team will it be overwhelming for them the first few minutes perhaps but you get it out of your system a lot when you walk in and you're able to go through the practice like they did yesterday they have their shoot around before tip off and so I would say for a typical group, yes, but this is also a team that has won 33 games. They've not been overwhelmed by anything this season. Their conference tournament is played at the Dallas Cowboys cavernous practice facility. That thing is a palace, and unlike anything that a lot of people have ever seen. And keep in mind, Zaz, this is an FAU team that – suddenly turned villain in the round of 32 because they played fairly Dickinson and in a 20,000 seat jam packed arena in Columbus Sunday night, they had 19,000 of those people standing for defensive stance for fairly Dickinson, totally turning against them. And they weathered that storm. So if they can get through that, I think they're going to be okay at the garden, but everyone's going to be, I mean, not necessarily at the garden tonight, but like nationally, everyone's rooting for them tonight. Right. For sure. And and Dusty May has told the guys that like all the stuff about the Elijah Martin dunk at the end of the Fairleigh Dickinson game and spare me the the pearl clutching about that. Um, but And all the fans that uh, obviously wanted the 16 seed to knock them off. FAU is, whether they are a Cinderella or not, uh, they're going to be the Cinderella here at MSG and they're going to have a majority of the crowd behind them. How do you prevent yourself let's talk about you because you can't put yourself in the players heads how do you prevent yourself from getting ahead and thinking if we win tonight we're one game we're playing to get to the final four yeah it's definitely crossed my mind but I what's what's good with my role and just the way that FAU travels is that I I am around them constantly. I'm very insulated within the team and in film study and anything that they do. So I very much too am brainwashed by the Dusty May pay attention to what's immediately ahead of you and not look ahead too much. Have I thought about who the better matchup for FAU would be Michigan state or Kansas state? Yeah, I definitely have, but it's been full fledged Tennessee. They're physical. They were handing out concussions to Duke right from tip and set the tone with that game. So uh, these players, especially, but even me, it seeps into to me is hey Tennessee first and foremost. And then you appreciate the fact you're, 40 minutes from the final four if you can get to Saturday. So we saw what happened with 
the Fairleigh Dickinson coach, he up and dipped like five minutes after they, they, they were eliminated. And he is now the head coach at Iona. So do we worry about Dusty May? I mean, I think obviously you do. And uh, Tobin Anderson, I'll give him credit. He he took those four days that people knew who he was and he made it the Tobin Anderson reality show and good for him. And he was able to parlay it into the Iona job. Uh, for, for Dusty May, if he does take another job and you look, it looks like Providence is filled up. That could have potentially been a, a Dusty May landing spot. Uh, you have uh, uh, Ole Miss that got filled up. That was a potential Dusty May landing spot. Notre Dame filled up. That could have been potentially Dusty May. There's still Penn State lingering out there. But Dusty, if he does leave FAU, and, and you, you can't blame him. He's done an unbelievable job. Has earned any opportunity that he gets past Florida Atlantic. It will be because he built something from literal nothing, from its base, from scratch. And so there's that concern. But man, a guy who's been at FAU, Florida Atlantic of all places for five seasons, finish above 500 every single year. One conference USA won 33 games in a season and has this team in the Sweet 16. It, common sense would dictate, yeah, Dusty's going to have his pick of jobs. Obviously. We hope he sticks around. Um, I, I'm not so much concerned, though, and I, I'm more proud of him if he does end up going somewhere else because, good Lord, more than anybody, this dude has earned it. So let's talk about last week, all right? We had you on the show last Friday ahead of the first game, all right? So now yeah. you, you're going into, the, into the, like I said, you're a you game away from playing for the Final Four now. Um, so the first time, I, I've done a handful of games in the NBA for the Heat. Yep. And the very first game that I did was actually a Heat Knicks game a few years ago, and I was it, it was it was the final possession of the game it was a one point game. So coming out of that timeout, I said to myself, "Wow, first game you're ever doing, you're gonna call a, a game winning either shot or stop. You better not f it up because <laughs> this is gonna be played in a bunch of different places. The final play, like so, let's make it good, you know." And I think it worked out fine. Bam yeah. actually made the stop. He got the rebound. He won. But I, I think it. I think it went fine. So when you were getting ready for the final call, which ended up being a final two possessions, but y- you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, what was going through your mind? So I, I definitely, and, and the sequence that led up to the game-winning layup with two and a half seconds left for Nick Boyd of FAU, it was a, a tie-up held ball, possession arrow to FAU. And so at that time, I did say to myself, well, here we go. Final possession. This is big time. Just be on. But I never, I'm telling you, Saz, I never pre-script anything. I just, I, I don't do it. I've been doing play-by-play for 17 years. Before that, minor league baseball. Before that, college level stuff. I just, I don't feel comfortable doing that because I think if you have something written out and you're going to try and either recite something off the top of your head, you thought about or try to read something you've jotted down, you have a better chance of effing that thing up by doing that. Um, So for me, it happened. I I'm confident in myself going off of how my mind works, how I can find the right words. I always know. And I, I promise you, I'm not trying to be a braggart about this. I don't, but you heard the call. I'm always confident that my energy level is going to properly convey what has just happened in a game, good or bad. That's not the issue. It's just the matter of making sure that the people listening while I'm excited also understand what just happened. So it was sort of a blackout moment. It all happened. The inbound Nick Boyd scores. And I'm literally just trying to, with excitement, explain what's happening. And then you're able to sort of, once the game ends and you're finishing up the final call, your mind decompresses. Things become a little more clear and you're able to finish the final call and convey the importance of the moment. So, so I knew obviously I had a great opportunity and I'm glad you're always glad after the fact, when you hear it back, because I'm my own worst critic with that stuff. You feel good when you, you like the final product that you put out there. You nailed it. I mean, like you did, you nailed it. It got attention all over Twitter. Like I, I guess it went viral, you know, and yeah. I, like you nailed it. It was, I, I mean, I don't know if I heard a better, you know, call from, you know, a school play by play guy over the weekend. It was like, you totally nailed it, man. 
I appreciate that, Zaz. Thank you. And that means a lot. I do appreciate it. And so I'm glad it did, though, because I, I also not 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 selfishly for me, but FAU. And, and if you look at some of the previews for Florida Atlantic of the Sweet 16, it's just bare bones, lazy dreck talking about this team and giving this team any sort of attention. So if that can be the thing that goes viral, that moment where the program is put on a pedestal and it shows that there are a lot of people excited about this program. Even though it's small, people haven't heard about it previously, then I'll take it because it's a good thing for those guys. The end of that game, too, like maybe you could tell me something that the cameras didn't pick up. But, man, I mean, uh, it was amateur hour from Memphis. You know, like right when the game ended, Penny chucks his water bottle like across the court. You had the players were fighting with each. They were fighting with each other uh, a timeout a couple minutes prior and then we're fighting with each other again when the final, you know, horn sound. It was amateur hour from Memphis. Zaz, I and I don't mean to be disrespectful to Penny Hardaway, but boy, that team has taken on his personality. He is surly. He is temperamental. He's got constant 100% chip on shoulder. And I suppose if you're an old time great, a lot of those guys are able to generate their, their own uh, disrespectful narrative to drive them. He's carried that though into his coaching. And that is not a cohesive unit. And when things got tight late, the cohesive team, the team won the game against Memphis. That, that altercation in the huddle so their their big time guard Kendrick Davis, who is awesome. I mean, that dude is nice. He comes down on Nick Boyd's foot, taking a bad contested three, sprains his ankle. He hobbles to the baseline. Their trainers didn't even come over to check on him for the first 20, 30 seconds he was over there. Next thing I know, next stoppage in play, he is suddenly healed. He's been touched by the hand of basketball god. He races out to midcourt, and he's confronting one of his teammates. Full-fledged shove at him. Penny Hardaway has to get involved. That was really bizarre. I've never seen anything like that, but there was a lot of bickering by those guys for about the final three, three and a half minutes. And so by the end of the game, I wasn't surprised by the water bottle chuck. I wasn't surprised by the continued altercations. It's very clear, and Dusty Mays talked about it a lot. FAU has won so many games and won the tight games because they're extremely cohesive. There's a belief, as cliche as it sounds, that, hey, someone's going to get the job done, and it is clear that that was not an identifying factor for Memphis this year. Have you uh, have you been able to take in much of the rest of the tournament uh, otherwise when, when you know, days FAU hasn't been playing? Have you, have you been watching the Canes? Yeah, I have been watching the Canes, and that was an unbelievably impressive performance against Indiana. And as as sort of unfulfilled as you felt after Drake, where you're like, boy, that was ugly. That was just a grind. I mean, to put it away in the second half after giving up a 10-point lead and just soaring past the Hoosiers, they look good. And I I know that there's injuries and there's a little concern there. But other than the – I don't – if I'm a Canes fan – I'm not overly concerned about the injuries because those guys like FAU can win any style. They can put up 75, 80 points. They can get the guard play rolling, but they also can grind it out. And if they have to grind it out in their sweet 16 matchup, if they have to grind it out with a top team, then so be it. I think they are perfectly capable of advancing to the final four. I tr- They have all the weapons. There's not one team in my mind that's, that's uh, better equipped than Miami to go to Houston. Man, so tonight, FAU, what time are we talking? Uh, what time's the game tonight? Nine o'clock nine. Eastern oh, time. But East it'll Coast. Probably be nine o'clock here. East Coast. I know. Why is it nine o'clock. I know. It's really frustrating. And you know it's going to start later because Michigan State and Kansas State play beforehand. And I don't see any way that that doesn't come down to the final possession. Um, but these guys are ready. They're rested. And we've been in New York since Monday. So, uh, so uh, FAU won Sunday night in Columbus. Uh, most of these teams, all of these teams went back to their campus, but FAU didn't want to go back on Monday and then leave again Tuesday. It's just, it's really tough travel. So they said, NCAA, thanks for offering the charter Tuesday. We're going to fly commercial to LaGuardia. So FAU flew Monday morning on a, on a Delta flight to LaGuardia. And uh, we've been here ever since, staying right off of Times Square. So these guys were able to experience that. So you, packed for, you guys had to pack for two weeks. 
Well, it, we, we, we didn't because nobody knew what the actual plan was going to be. So laundry oh. was done at Madison Square Garden. So uh, took advantage of their facilities. And so luckily, uh, FAU is an Adidas school. Adidas has sent boxes and boxes and boxes of gear over the last couple of days. So that sort of offset the laundry problem as well. That's awesome. What a, what a cool experience. That's yeah. good stuff, man. Uh, all right. Tell again, everyone, uh, tell again how everyone can, can hear your call tonight if they don't want to watch or maybe they, maybe they want to mute the TV. And listen right. to your broadcast. Right. That, that's how you do it. Tell everyone. I love it. It's the FAU Basketball Radio Network from Learfield all throughout uh, South Florida. But also uh, use the Varsity Network app. It is free. Just download it on your phone. You can sync it up with your television. It's by Learfield. You don't have to pay a cent. Crystal clear. It's perfect. Every team in the NCAA tournament has their own channel. Just search FAU Basketball. It's there on the Varsity Network app. And that's how you hear me tonight for FAU in Tennessee. Great job, Ken. Uh, I'm excited for this game. I'm, I'm, I got the Panthers game at 7, and then right when the Panther game is ending, you guys will probably be a few minutes in. This is a very big sports night in the Zaslow Mansion. I, I love it. And and you you have put together a perfect outline. I love the plan. I think you're on the right track. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, we're potentially talking next week uh, with FAU preparing to go to Houston. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, great job, Ken. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, man.